Let's talk about analog to digital conversion, or ADC. Analog to digital conversion is where the microcontroller will take an analog signal or an analog voltage, specifically in, in the form of a waveform over time. So this would be time, and this would be voltage, let's say 0 to 3.3. And you have a device that outputs some kind of voltage over time. That voltage over time, let's put in some time markers here. So you can take the output of this device that is showing a, a voltage over here at zero volts and over here it's 3.3 volts. You can take that voltage and you convert that to a number, a number that you can use in computation. If you're new to analog to digital conversion, this has got to seem really abstract to you. And you have to think of it in a way that something that you want to sense, like something in the environment, will most likely give you an output in a voltage, and in a voltage between two specific reference voltages, from zero to, let's say, 3.3 volts. So let's say this is 60 degrees here, and this is 70 degrees. This would be the voltage at 60 degrees here, and this would be the voltage at 70 degrees. It, does, it means that the voltage here, this would be around two volts, and this would be around 2.3 volts. My controller is not gonna take a voltage and then give you 60 degrees unless you create a computation for that. It's going to give you an output of zero to, if it's an eight bit number, 255. And if it's a 10-bit number, this would be 0 to 1024. In the 8-bit case, this 60 degrees would be around 153, and the 70 degrees would be around 179. So you could take this number, or these numbers, and use them in some kind of computation that would yield the actual temperature, or whatever you would need to do with that particular number at that temperature. You don't really need to convert it to a temperature if you're, if you're really going to use it in some other kind of computation. So you can have the microcontroller constantly reading what this temperature value is, or whatever this device is reading from the environment. And this will happen through time. So when you turn your microcontroller on, you can start reading the signals here from the analog device and it'll start out at zero and then these would be like 8-bit numbers here and then you'd have another one here that would be around let's say 102 in 8-bit number i'm basing this on about 40 percent or 0.4 40 percent of the 3.3 volts which is about 1, 1 1.32. So I'm just taking 3.3 and multiplying it by 0.4. Or you can also take the 255 and multiply that by 0.4, which is 102. And then you can get the next conversion here. And that would be somewhere in between 153 and 179, let's say 1, 165. And then here, so you, it'll keep doing these conversions. And I'm showing it to you in this way because a conversion happens between two periods of a time frame. And this is important because the ADC, the analog to digital converter, needs to be connected to a clock, a clock source in your microcontroller. And that clock source has to be prescaled or scaled in a way that it allows time for a conversion to happen. So there could be many clocks, clock cycles in between this. There's gonna be a whole bunch of clock cycles between this, but it needs those clock cycles to do one conversion. I believe that number is 17 microseconds, which is the what I'm gonna start doing in the beginning programs, is I'm gonna use about 17 microseconds, which is actually a long period of time and is one of the periods of times you can use in the analog to digital converter. That sounds a little bit complicated right now, but as we get into the program and as we go further into the analog to digital converter, you'll understand much better how this works. So what can you use analog to digital conversion for? 
Some of the applications I can think of are sensing, which are generally environmental sensing or sensing things from the environment. And that could be temperature. It could be tilt from an accelerometer. It could be angular velocity or the speed at which something is tilting. And that would be from like a gyroscope. This temperature would be obviously from something like a thermistor or a thermocouple. It could be used for sens sensing distances, either through laser or sonar, radar, or infrared. You could even use it for controlling, like with a potentiometer. When you turn the knob of a potentiometer, the voltage goes up or down, and you can take that number and you can apply it in various different ways, maybe controlling a menu system or controlling the volume of some audio output. You could also use it for recording audio, which is probably in the sensing application or sensing category, because that would be a microphone. And you can, you can convert these, these analog variations to a set of numbers for each point. Each of these points could be a number that is stored as a digital recording of audio. The list of these applications go on and on. There really is an endless list of how you can apply analog to digital conversion. With the microcontroller that we're using, there are 16 channels of analog to digital converter pins that are located along the microcontroller. And there's also one channel within the microcontroller that actually has a temperature sensor. And then there is another channel for voltage reference. And this is a voltage reference that is absolutely accurate. It is a band gap voltage reference, which means that it is an, it's a constant voltage reference no matter how much variability you're having in your supply, in your power supply to supply the microcontroller. And this is important because the voltage reference must be very accurate to be able to give you a good reading constantly on a analog to digital conversion. You might notice that I use the word channels. Channels is the way you would specify the analog to digital controller's separation from one analog device to another. Pin 15, for instance, is the ADC N1, which is considered channel one. And pin number 16 is ADC N2. And being that these are channels and not just regular input pins, you cannot have a conversion on the number one at the same time you're doing a conversion on number two. This has to happen one after another. And let's say we have an analog signal coming into two and into one, and you want to read both of those and use both of those numbers in some kind of computation, there is a thing called scan direction. And it will, it will do either this one first and then this one second, depending on how you program and how you set up your channel register. Number 17 is ADC in three. Number 20 is ADC in four. Number 21 is ADC in five. Number 22 is ADC in six. Number 23 is ADC in seven. Number 26 is ADC in eight. Number 27 is ADC in nine, all the way to number eight is ADC in 10. And these are the alternate functions, by the way, of these pins. These pins are used for general purpose input output, but they can also be used for the analog to digital converter. And pin number nine is ADC 11. And pin number 10 is ADC in 12. And pin number Pin number 11 is 
ADC in 13. And pin number 24 all the way back over here is ADC input number 14. And number 25 is ADC in number 15. It looks like we only have 15 inputs in, or 15 channels. And the ADC number 16, I'm just going to write it over here somewhere, is the internal temperature sensor. And the ADC number 17 is the VREF. Now you know how the microcontroller is set up and what input pins you can use for inputting voltages between certain voltage minimums and maximums, or what steps do you need to take in programming analog digital conversion. There are certain steps you have to take to actually set up the analog to digital converter to start doing the conversions and then the actual conversions themselves. So let's see what those steps are. The first one is called calibration. And I'm actually not sure if you really need this calibration step, but I would advise doing it. And what this does is each microcontroller that is put out in the factory is calibrated to a certain in a certain way. It, it has a specific setup that when the calibration is done in the analog to digital conversion setup, it, ca it calibrates according to what is set up in the factory for that particular chip. So when you do the calibration, it calibrates the voltage reference and the converter so that it's, it's going to have a repeatable reading every time, meaning that a particular temperature will give you a specific number and it'll always be that number every single time. And then you have connecting the ADC with a clock. And the clock source for the ADC is the HSI 14. And we'll get more into this later on as we program it. The next step is to enable the ADC. And then the last step, you establish the conversion, where you set up the channels Specify the scan direction. Establish the start of the conversion. And then you can grab the data. And the conversion can be in an 8-bit number, a 10-bit number, or a 12-bit number. The resolution which is the 8, 10, or 12 bits, can be dependent on the actual application, whether the, the sensor or whatever you're controlling requires that, that amount of resolution, or if it even can give you that amount of resolution where the, where the analog doesn't really need that much resolution because maybe it's controlling sprinklers or something like that, or if it requires a lot of resolution where it may be connected to some kind of safety application or a mission critical application. Now you should know a little bit about analog to digital conversion. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to set up the circuit, which is extremely easy. And we'll start getting into the programming.